Welcome to Top Notch Online TV, a paragon of excellence. With you today is Teacher Rispa, a teacher from PCA Kikui High School. I teach English and Literature. I'm an examiner as well as an author. We are still delving into understanding the An Artist of the Floating World, a novel by Kazuo Ishiguro. It is one among the optional set books. Therefore, you can choose to do, to do this one once you understand the contents of the, of the story. In our previous episodes, we've already done the plot summary. We've already covered on character and characterization. In case you need those previous episodes, you can always tune in to Top Notch Online TV. They're all available on YouTube. As you are continuing further, today we are going to look at themes. When you're looking at themes, we are looking at issues. What issues are prevalent in the text when the author is speaking to his audience? What are some of the issues the author is raising? And uh, from a previous episode we have ever done, we've always said that when you're talking about a theme, ensure you're using either a noun or a noun phrase. We are ready to start on our, we are ready to start on our themes. The first theme I'm going to talk about is the theme of regret. When you're talking about regret, we are talking about the wish that something should not have happened. We wish that something should not have happened, meaning the thing has already happened in your past. The characters that you're already familiar with right now, some of them are expressing regret at some of the things they have already done. First of all, I'll talk about one among the characters. Uh, the main character by the name of Ono is one example of a character who is undergoing regret. He had been used to paint some propagandist kind of paintings. The paintings that arose, they whipped up the emotions of the younger Japanese and they went into war. What shows that Ono is regretting is the fact that he has touched away his paintings. When the grandson is in his house, the grandson keeps wondering, grandfather, is this your painting? He points to another one, is this your painting? But you're learning, none among the paintings on display, none belongs to Masuji Ono. His has been tidied away. He no longer wants to associate with the events of the past. That shows that he is regretting. Another regret, a person who, the person who regrets the most is Ono. Another illustration that he regrets for his past action is that he keeps digressing or even feigning memory loss whenever he has to talk about his past. That is an indicator that he is not very proud of his activities of the past. Because of the same activities of the past, activities that are regrettable. He even goes ahead to seek out his old acquaintances so that he can, he can ensure they portray his name in positive light in case they are approached by the, uh, by the investigator who is undertaking investigations for the sake of Noriko's intended marriage. Still on Ono. Another instance that Ono is regretting, he regrets on informing on Kuroda. We look at, later on, Ono needs the services of Kuroda. He needs that. Kuroda needs to speak to him, uh, speak about him in positive light. But then he had already burnt the bridge that was connecting him to Kuroda by informing him to the authorities. He goes ahead and once he tries to speak to Kuroda about it, that, they, uh, that he portrays him in the positive light, Kuroda is not willing to have any sitting, any sitting with Ono. That is the instance that Ono knows his past might come to haunt him. Therefore, he decides to come clean at the dinner table with the Saitos. He goes ahead and admits his mistake. We're still looking at yet another character who is displaying regret a character by the name of Suichi. You look at the Sui, you look at Suichi. Suichi is a representation of the youth. We are being told the loss of life of Kenji is hurting him a lot because it might as well have been him. He was just uh, lucky that that day wasn't his day. Therefore, he uh, he was able to he he did not die. But then Kenji died. But then the activities of the young people, young people being aroused into fighting their 
neighbors into acquiring new territories, he regrets these actions. And it can be told from his wordings. He's talking about the young people were fighting for a useless cause. The fact that the fact that he considers the cause no longer important but useless, it is a sign that he is regretting the turnout of events. We are still looking at another illustration, maybe another character that expresses regret. We are looking at we are looking at the composer Naguchi. Naguchi, as we had said earlier, was a composer whose songs were were able to elicit emotions of aggression in the young people and whenever they were attacking their neighbors they could look up to his songs to give them to give them that kind of aggressive morale later on naguchi regrets his the comp the composition of these songs and he ends up taking his own life in what you're calling harakiri honorable suicide similarly whenever we are discussing naguchi the composer we cannot also fail to mention uh, the president of Miyake's mother company, who had regretted the involvement of his company during the era of World War II. And as an apology, he ends up taking his own life and he now redeems his company. That is it. Uh, as we are, before we leave the theme of regret, Let's add on to it a final illustration. Let's talk about Enchi. Enchi's regret is momentarily, it, it, it is a regret that is not lasting a long time. With Enchi, he is kind and he welcomes Ono into Kuroda's house. Later on, he regrets his earlier action of having been polite and even welcomed Ono into Kuroda's house. He goes ahead and asks him politely to leave, citing that, Kuroda will not be happy in case he finds him in the in his own house and he promises to convey the message that Ono had passed by but the fact that he welcomed this person without first having known his real identity he regrets that fact that becomes our first theme the theme of regret we're also looking at another theme a theme that you're going to call conflict conflict is when you're having two opposing sides maybe one wants this the other side wants the other one therefore there is bound to be a conflict there's a conflict that can be in co when, when we're discussing conflict as a theme we can break it into two uh, major conflicts the first conflict we shall call it generational conflict there is generational conflict whereby the people of the olden days, maybe before Japan was defeated in the World War, and the people who later on, the younger generation, or we can just pity them against each other in terms of the older generation and the younger generation. That is the kind of conflict you're talking about. We, how are we going to illustrate this conflict? We are going to illustrate this conflict through someone such as Ichiro. Ichiro is an illustration of the younger generation. The older generation, such as Ono, they are still holding those feelings of nationalism, the superiority of Japan. Even when his, gran even when his grandson is playing and imitating he or Silva, he is imitating a cowboy, the grandfather can only guess that he is imitating some great Japanese leaders. But we are seeing that on the other side, the younger generation is now embracing the Americans, the Americans who are currently ruling over the Japanese during the occupation of the Jap uh, occupation of Japan by the Americans. We are seeing that the younger generation is not seeing the problem with America. They're even embracing America. Ichiro cannot help but admire American cowboys. That is one illustration on generation on generational kind of conflict. A second illustration that speaks to the fact that there is generational conflict, let's pity maybe the older generation, Ono, versus uh, the younger generation, people such as Suichi. Suichi is also among, the, is a representation of the younger generation, the generation that is bitter because of the activities of the older generation. They feel that they were misled into an unworthy cause. And even uh, from the reading of our book, we are learning that Suichi was more comfortable with his 
sun embracing the western culture admiring the americans is more comfortable with that on the other side suichi harbors a kind of bitterness towards the older generation a bitterness that can be attributed to the fact that he feels that these people their lives are still intact yet the younger people had to lose their lives on account of the advice given by the older generation that is what you are seeing about intergenerational kind of conflict we can still go ahead and talk about another kind of conflict another kind of conflict we shall be looking it uh, look at, looking at it from the family level within the family there seems to be a conflict when i'm looking at the family I'll, I'll go away from switch is still the family of honor you can still pick on such an example but because it has already been explained let me pick on another example of conflict conflict between ono and his own father his father had been someone who dealt with money he had always been calling ono to his reception and he would teach him on counting on counting money and he was hoping that the son will take over the family business something that has to do with finance on the other hand the son wanted to forge his own path the son wanted to be a painter the son wanted to be an artist the father got wind of this information that the son wanted to take uh, to take art as a career path and the father had summoned him he had tried to make the son disown the fact that he wanted to be a painter and he had even gone ahead and confiscated the paintings of ono and give, given him further instructions that he needs to go and get any other paintings that he might be still uh holding but ono had refused ono had said the burning of his paintings had in fact strengthened his resolve into becoming an artist and later on you see ono becomes an artist therefore he defied his father's wishes that was family conflict another second illustration on family conflict let's talk about noriko and her father ono noriko and the father ono are in some kind of a conflict in fact let me just talk about ono versus his daughters both daughters seem to have a conflict with their father their father has refused to owning up to a mistake he did in his past a mistake that is now costing his younger daughter an opportunity to be married the older uh, the younger daughter had in fact uh, almost been engaged to her uh, to the miyake's family to be married and she had thought it would be a walk in the path in the park she had thought it would have been a walk in the path and sooner or later she would be married to Jiromiyake but then the negotiations had fallen through and it had left Noriko very bitter Noriko projects her bitterness towards the father even in non trivial matters when the father is trying to trim some uh, flowers she goes ahead accusing the father you are so proud you are always ruining things but in reality she feels that the father was in the way of her getting married to Jiro Miyake by refusing to admit to his past that is that is family conflict at that level and even Setsuko is advising the father any gaps in your past please they need to be filled so that when the investigator visits their family we shall be in the clear that was it about family conflict that Masuji Ono decides to resolve by meeting people from his past and making amends even though others like Kuroda they are not really willing to make amends with him that is it about our second theme our second theme that we are calling the theme of conflict we still have another theme that we are going to call pedagogy or we are going to call this theme teacher student relationship in simpler terms you're talking about we are talking about the uh, we are talking about the theme of being a teacher how how is it being a teacher and how does the teacher relate with their student first of all i'll start with the outright uh, relationship between someone who was a teacher and also contrasting it with the one who was the student first of all let's talk about ono and shitaro's relationship Ono had been a teacher, an art teacher to Shintaro, and Shintaro according to Ono was a less promising student. 
even as uh, the book is currently going on we are learning that Shintaro had been reduced to drawing uh, cartoon illustrations for a certain book that is that was what he was doing he was not amounting to much but then how are they relating we are looking at their relationship it is marked with a lot of flattery on the part of Shintaro Shintaro is attributing the fact that he keeps praising the teacher over and over to the fact that he really uh, he really admires the teacher it is almost to an extent that we can call it it's like he's worshiping his teacher and the teacher is someone as I've earlier said he loves to have his he loves to have his ego massaged therefore he does not mind the company of Shintaro who is in constant praises of him and they always are drinking at Mrs. Kawakami's. They are the two customers. They are the two loyal customers at Mrs. Kawakami's. And they are always talking about the past uh, and what influence. Uh, they are talking about memories of their past. That is the relation, the kind of relationship we are seeing between Shintaro and Ono. Later on, we see that they fall out. It is also a common occurrence in this book that a teacher is really respected by the student. Later on, we see a falling out between the teacher and that particular student. What caused the falling out between Ono and Shintaro? Shintaro had wanted to be disassociated with a certain painting he did so that he can expand his chances of working in a certain high school. He had come to his teacher and he wanted to, the teacher to confirm the fact that he had been against that kind of work. But then, Ono was not willing to do so. Ono did not see the sense. Why should someone not take why, why should someone not take responsibility for his past actions? And from then onwards they fell out and we are seeing that Shintaro was no longer frequenting the Kawakami's place so that he will not run into his teacher Ono. We are going to look at a second kind of relationship, the relationship between Ono and Kuroda. Kuroda had been a, a promising student of Ono. He had been, in fact, been the best of Ono's students. They had always been drinking at the Migihidari. He, ono loved to hang out with his more intelligent students. Among them is Kuroda. Just like the, uh, the flow of the book, the teacher is admired. Later on, there's a fallout. A fallout happens between Ono and Kuroda. Kuroda does not follow the path that the teacher, the, the, the teacher points out that they need to follow. Painting, propagandist kind of paintings. And later on, Ono, ono informs on Kuroda for anti-patriotic kinds of paintings. This is that Kuroda is arrested and detained. He is only released later after the war is over. Upon being released, we see that Ono is trying to make amends, trying to reach out to Kuroda, but Kuroda says that any meeting between them will not be of any productivity. In other, in other words, Kuroda is not willing to forgive Ono for his past transgression. We are also looking at yet another kind of teacher-student relationship. Let's look at Kuroda and Enchi. How do they relate? Enchi is in awe of the teacher, really admires Kuroda. Even when Ono visits and he points out the style of Kuroda is clearly evident in your painting. Enchi, for a while over there, he feels ashamed and he goes ahead and says those are his paintings and he has never got to the rank of his teacher. That shows that he holds the teacher in high esteem. Uh, Enchi is also very... Enchi is also very grateful to the teacher to an extent that the teacher commands his loyalty. The enemy of his teacher Kuroda becomes his enemy as well. Upon learning the true identity of Ono, he decides to turn out Ono from Kuroda's house. That, uh, Knowing the fact that it is Ono who had informed on Kuroda and caused Kuroda some untold kind of suffering while he was in detention. We are still looking at yet another teacher versus student relationship. Let's look at Morisan and Ono. Or Morisan and General. Let's talk about Morisan generally and his students. When I'm talking about Morisan, he was a great artist and he loved to take promising people under his tutelage. They become his apprentices. There is a 
a student by the name of Sasaki. Sasaki was a favorite of Morisan, but later on when he was no longer following what Morisan is advising him, he was turned away from the villa. This made Ono to be the first contender in taking up the new position, being the favorite student of Morisan. But later on when when Ono also started to paint some propagandist kind of paintings, he was also turned away from the uh, from the villa. When upon Morisan tried to straighten him, straighten him back to the right path, Ono had refused. Therefore, he was turned away from the villa, and that is when he went to work with Matsuda. Finally, we talk about a case in reference about someone working under the apprenticeship of another one, but he was not really his teacher. We are talking about Ono and being taught by his father on how to be taking over the family business. But Ono was defiant and he was not willing to take the career path of his father. And he went ahead and decided to forge his own path into becoming an artist. For our episode today, our last theme we are going to look at, let's look at the theme of art. Even from the title of the even from the title of the novel, the book is about an artist, therefore the book is focusing on art among the major themes. And when you're looking at art, as much as art what comes to people's mind mostly is about is about painting. We also have other artistic talents. Even a writer, is even writing is a work of art. We'll start by talking about the Okada Shingen. I've mentioned Okada Shingen a number of times, but maybe some people are at a loss. What is this Okada Shingen? Okada Shingen was an exhibition. An exhibition among the people at the helm of the Okada Shingen was someone by the name of Shitsu, Shitsu Matsuda. I've mentioned Matsuda already when you're dealing with character and characterization. And the Okada Shingen was an exhibition, an exhibition where upcoming artists as well as writers would come and they would showcase their talents hoping to be discovered. So when I'm mentioning art, I cannot, I, I cannot ignore talking about the Okada Shingen. Later on, we are seeing also when you're talking about the theme of art, let's mention some of the artists that have been mentioned. We are looking at artists such as Master Takeda. Master Takeda, who used to have a farm, a farm where he would recruit a number of artists and they would be painting geishas some kind of paintings that were produced in masses and they were being shipped for sale to foreign countries. Away from Master Takeda, we also are being uh, we also talk about a certain artist by the name of by the name of Moriyama. Moriyama, the one that you are popularly calling Morisan. Morisan had taken a number of artists in his tutelage, and even when Ono was being approached. When Ono was being approached by Matsuda, he had already lived in Morisan's villa for six years. We are also talking about other protégé, other students, other pupil artists. We are talking about someone such as Kuroda. We are talking about Shintaro and we are talking about Enchi. Enchi was also and she was also a pupil under Kuroda. And finally, we are talking about the artist of the floating world. We are talking about Ono himself, the narrator and our main character. When you're talking about art, what forged the path of, we've already talked about how did Ono become an artist? He used to do it in secret. The father discovered it and he became rebellious, but later on he stuck to his path of being an artist and he became a great artist well at that. As can be seen from the mention by his grandson, the grandson talks about him and the grandson is asking, my father says he used to be a great painter, but then you had to put, you had to stop because Japan lost the war. And when you're talking about, we've already talked about the exhibition of art. We've talked about the artists. We want to talk about, we've talked about the artists, but have we talked about any paintings that have been brought to our focus in our story. We've been talking about, we need to talk about the paintings. I'll give a painting uh, as an example. There's that painting that had been done by Ono, a painting that was 
called complacency. The painting of complacency that the Japanese, it's like they're complacent. They had accepted their fate. And then the paintings now started to arouse their feelings that they need to reach out for more. They need to be more aggressive. They need to conquer new territories. At that point when he was having those feelings was when he painted the painting that you're calling complacency. Another painting that has been mentioned in the book, a painting by Kuroda, a painting that is being, uh, a painting that is being called the, the patriotic spirit. The patriotic spirit was a painting by Kuroda, but then to someone who has understood, it was a sarcasm from Kuroda's of perspective. Kuroda is talking about patriotic spirit and then the painting goes ahead to portray people who are laughing loudly, drinking, making merry. What is patriotic about that? Kuroda was being sarcastic. And I've just said, art is not only about paintings. You're also talking about other talents, even such as writers. And you're not talking about other arts. Let's talk about a composer such as Naguchi. Naguchi was a composer of songs, songs that became influential into Influential, influential during the days that the Japanese were feeling the need to become aggressive. And a lot of people went to war based on these songs. That is it for today. We meet next time as you continue to further demystify the themes. And when you're doing the themes, we are gaining a further understanding of the book. Until next time, it's a goodbye.